Hey guys, I am Elisa with Jots Designs and I'm gonna play with some UV resin. Um, these are just some pieces that I've, well, most of them are just testing um, and whatnot. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play with some alcohol inks, which is what these are and we're done with. So like this side is the side that the ink was dropped in. Same with this and this. And then this is the other effect or the other side that shows the effects. So you can see that this one, there's a lot more that dropped. This one didn't. I haven't quite fully figured out why. Like if you have to let it sit and the alcohol ink just kind of sit in the resin for a little bit before you cure it or not. Um, so we're gonna do a couple tests. <clears throat> Excuse me. And this one I did in a mold um, and I recommend not doing it in a mold just because so this is this just happens to be right here um, this is coaster mold and it doesn't matter you know what shape or size but because what is blocking the sides of your piece is the silicone when you take this off nothing's there to keep anything contained um, so alcohol doesn't really necessarily cure very well in resin um, and that's what actually gives it the, the effects because it's resisting the resin. Um, so then the resin will cure kind of around the alcohol inks. A lot of times why people may think that you can't do it in UV resin because it cures too fast. Um, but as you can see, you can do it. And these two, um, I actually used silicone oil for and got these kind of neat effects. So this is the side that I did everything in. Um, and then this is the front, basically. And then you can also use, um, oh, this was an alcohol ink that I poured. Actually, I used um, UV resin to do that. So instead of just taking the resin and mixing in the color, I actually have a white somewhere. Um, I have one of these little guys. So I, I basically poured it in this side to see what it would do because you never really kind of know what it will do. Um, and that is what happened. And then um, I also have this distressed um, oxide ink that is Tim Holtz. Um, it has kind of different colors that you can see. So people use it for inking um, stamps and whatnot. And it, I, I really don't know <laughs> all that it does because I've never used it for its proper uh, use really. But if you trap it in resin, it um, has a nice, neat effect. So I used this blue and a purple that I have, um, trapped it in there so that way it would stay in the resin. So I don't know if you can see the side there. And this one I actually did in a mold, but because the resin it was all the way around the edges, the ink had nowhere to escape, basically. So it just sat on there until I did my other layer. But see how it gets darker? So it's kind of color changing um, in a way. So I can flip them over and that color will rise. So I'll just leave those here so you can actually kind of see that happen. So that's pretty neat with the distressed oxide, or distress oxide inks. Um, and then I also have this patina for metal um, white gold. And this is a Ranger ink. Um, and it was another test I did just to see what would, what would kind of happen. So I think what happened here with this bubble is I dropped it in this way. Um, and the underneath, because it's so dark, it didn't get cured and it caused that bubble. Um, so that's definitely one thing you want to keep in mind is whether or not that underside is being cured or not. And that's actually what happened with this one. It did not cure because this is the side I was working on and it didn't cure. So I had done my first layer, put more um, resin in there, did my effects, did the top layer. And then when I took the tape off and turned it over, this bubble was actually moving. So then I cured it and was able to keep it that way. All right, so let me get 
some of this out of my way here. And right now I have uh, this one's miniature sweet. And this one I think I got on Amazon. I really haven't noticed a difference with any of them except uh, the difference between these and this one, this one says thick type, so this one's really good for doming, where these um, aren't as thick, basically. So they're they're better just for kind of doing all your, your basic everything. <laughs> I am technical, if you can tell. All right, so I have, um, I just I keep them upside down, and I just have it in a cup. Um, that way I don't have to sit there waiting for it to come out. So I have these on packing tape and it's super cheap packing tape. Um, well it's a duck brand but it is a very thin packing tape. So it does leave a residue that you have to clean off from the underside. Um, and I ordered this flash break tape from Amazon. I saw a lot of people using it and it doesn't leave a residue. And I ordered the wrong size. I was not paying attention um, because obviously it does not work for those. So I'm going to try it with this guy and it should work if I can open it. Okay, and then what I also like to do with um, pendants at least is I will just take like um, a paper towel just to give it a little bit of give to make sure, and I just kind of push down and turn it just to make sure that that tape is good and on there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do um, two alcohol ink tests and a silicone test. Uh, see how that color is already starting to rise? I love that thing. Okay. So the first step is to um, put a very thin layer of resin um, and cure it. And then that way, you st basically what you want to do with all the inks that really don't work nicely with resin, um, meaning that they resist them, which is what all of these are doing, um, you kind of want to trap it within the resin. So the way I've found to do that is you put a thin layer and then another layer, a thicker layer, do your effects, cure it, and then put your top layer on. Um, definitely have noticed with the alcohol inks um, especially, you have to um, cure it longer um, and that alcohol ink will definitely stay um, liquid in some areas. So you'll want to wipe it up a little bit and then put your top layer on and you might need more than one top layer. So definitely do thin layers if you can. Okay. So I'm just going to push the resin around and make sure that that bottom is coated. being deep will give you the space that you need for your effects. Okay, so what I grabbed, um, I have the Duck Blue, various Copic ink, and I put the uh, white pinata ink in one of these fine line applicators just to have a smaller tip on it. Okay, so yeah, you want to check to see how thick you made your layer, and I, I did make it pretty thin. So I'm going to add a little bit of the resin in here. And this is basically the working layer. 
is what is gonna have all the effects on it. And I'm just giving it time to spread out so I know how thick it is because I'm gonna need to put layers on top of it but still inside the bezel. Okay, so I am a little over halfway. Um, but just like um, any Petri style, I'm gonna shake this guy up. Um, just like any Petri, you wanna follow your color with white. Um, and since this is such a little one, I'm gonna just use one color. I like this piece had two colors in it. Um, and these did as well. But I wanted to try one with just, just the one color and see what happens. Okay, so my tests today with the, with the two alcohol inks. Um, I'm gonna have one sitting um, for about five minutes before I start curing it. And then I'm gonna have the other one sitting for about 10 minutes before I start curing it, just to see if there's any difference in how um, the alcohol ink drops. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but the alcohol ink is actually kind of spreading and coming up the sides just a little bit. It's not gonna, it's not gonna boil over or anything, but that's what it's doing. It's kind of spreading out towards the sides and hugging the sides. I don't want to do too many. I'm just gonna do a couple more here, and I'm gonna take just a quick peek and see. Make sure everything's being oops, coated and yep, when you do that, that happens. So I'm going to let that sit. Okay, so it's just what I grabbed. Uh, lipstick Red and Pure Pink, both Copic. Also, I am not an expert on pea trees. I've done some, and I've had some really good successes, but I've also had a lot of failures. going off for my four minutes. I'm gonna stick this one in. And this one I'm gonna set, let it sit for 10 minutes. Okay, so this one's gonna be sitting. And now, 
so this is the silicone that I use. Um, I use it for resin pieces, regular resin pieces as well. Got this at Walmart in the hardware department. Super cheap, a few bucks. And I am still only, well, it's still mostly full. I've had this thing forever because you don't, you don't really use a lot. Okay, so I grabbed some, um, this is La Res, it's the light turquoise, and Color Obsession Raspberry Crush paste. Let me show you, see how it still moves? I'm going to cure it some more. And I'm actually going to stick this on top of it's a, just a two ounce little kind of side cup. They come with lids, but I never use the lids. So I'm going to put this on top. And I was moving that way too much. Oh my God. Um, it'll let the light on the bottom and cure it a little bit more too. Okay, so really I'm just gonna kinda stick them in there. Because the silicone's gonna not care where I put it. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this one in to cure. So both of them are in there. Okay, so I've got the silicone. Just using stick. I think I'm actually just going to use a toothpick so I have the more of a point. Um, really, it doesn't matter what you use. But I'm going to attempt to see if I can get that. What I think happened is that I had a lot of silicone on there and it stayed just kind of at the bottom and it came out below the resin, is what I'm thinking happened. So yeah, I'm just letting it kind of soak up the silicone here. And then go down. Okay, I'm gonna actually think about this a little bit. So with this one, I stuck it in and I swirled it. This one, I stuck it in and I just let it kind of sit there and then I, I, I twirled just the stick. I didn't swirl the stick. I just turned the, t the stick with that one. But that one I swirled and I love that too. I like both of them. I think I'm going to kind of maybe do both. I'm going to just stick it into the bottom. actually oddly not reacting um, oh there it goes now I see it okay it is reacting a little bit you can see these cells building here so I'm gonna actually add some more just kind of I can't decide if I wanted a clean one or not. So I'm gonna 
let it soak on this one just a little but not much and stick it right Actually, I'm going to let this one cure not on a cup first and see if I somehow get that. You can see that silicone made kind of little, little window cells in there. Keep that silicone level. Okay, so here is the first alcohol ink one. And there's still movement, but it's definitely more around the edges. Um, nope, it's moving. Okay, sorry, I had to make sure it wasn't just the light. Right on the edges, you can see it's still moving. So. Sometimes there's a lot of excess, um, depending on how much you put in. But what I try to do is wipe up just a little bit of it. Because when you put the other resin in, the alcohol ink is gonna spread and come out. I'm gonna test the center. So there is some hard below, um, very thin layer there. So let me try trapping some of it here first. I see it going up the sides though. So what I like to do is I actually start on the sides instead of in the middle because if you put it in the middle, it's gonna push out. So I like to start it on the sides and hopefully get that ink underneath the resin first. And I'm definitely going to start with a um, more shallow layer. And I'm not going to let it sit long. Um, and actually, that gave it a really cool effect, but I'm going to get it into the light very quickly and hopefully get that started um, curing before the alcohol ink spreads too much. Okay, and with this one, it's definitely still moving, so I'm gonna let that get hit a couple more, more minutes. And as you can see, the silicone, that top is not moving. If I turn the piece over, um, I don't want it to explode on me or anything, and it doesn't look like it's going to. So, if you're ready for it, there is that side. Let me take this off. It's going to have a sticky residue on it. But, um, you'll be able to see kind of the but pink definitely just kind of stayed separated from it. Then you have a two-tone. So that's kind of cool. All right, so fill that in with resin. Okay. Now what I'm looking for here is to see if there's any any liquid that came up um, and did not get trapped by by the resin and I did not fill it up with resin I just wanted to make sure that I got the edges um, and I did swoop it in just a little bit which gave it a nice little depth in there um, oh. okay so the ink right here 
My handy dandy little toothpick thing. The ink right here moves. And that's actually where I did not hit it with um, resin. So like right in the middle is hard, but this area, I did not hit it with resin, so it's still liquid right there. And that's okay, but I wanna definitely make sure that as I'm doing it, still start from the outside. I'm gonna do this again so from the outside and watch to make sure that no, um, no liquid comes basically on the outside. You definitely don't want it on the outside because that's where it starts leaking from your piece. I'm gonna cover the edges. And I'm gonna bring it into the middle here. You can see it moving still. right on the edge on this side, which means it's not gonna cure happily. I'm gonna get this under and start curing it away. So, there's that side. There's a couple bubbles in there. And there's that side. Oh my god, it's moving! Okay, so there is uh, some silicone trapped in there. So I'm actually going to see what kind of what I can do with this and spread some of that pink around maybe. So here is this one. Oh my god, I've done that so many times and let me check this first. Okay, so what I'm checking for is to see if there's any liquid or if it's cured. And there is liquid. So it did come out on the edges here. Um, and it will continue to come out unless you seal it in. giving it a good good cleaning and actually I can feel there's holes in here um, because I didn't fill everything in right away um, and especially right here in the middle there's kind of a crater you can see that I can actually stick that in there um, so now since it's been cured a few times I'm definitely just trying to get as much of um, Kind of the liquid out if I can. Okay, 
So the bubbles have risen and they are no longer on that side. So I'm gonna cure it upside down, but I'm gonna take care of this guy first. So, totally lost all the texture on that, playing around with that silicone, but that's okay, I learned from it. But, there's no bubbles now, so what I'm gonna do is stick it in and cure it this way, so that way, hopefully it'll solidify um, any resin around that silicone and not have, have it still moving in there. And this one is already going to be making a mess. So I'm just going to wipe it up a little bit because the resin itself already started setting, so I'm okay there. But that's, I don't think this one's going to work out. It's always a hit and miss on this if you can capture it right or not. But if you can see, I push it down, kind of spews it out. to stay liquid. So what I'm going to do as a test here is dump the liquid out. Okay, so that one is interesting. That's I think the better side, but I'm gonna stick stick that back in. I don't know. Okay, so um, <laughs> the petri effect is still. Let's take this cup away. Okay. The petri effect is still there, and. I'm just kind of taking out the color. So the white drips, so like this. Um, I guess, you know, you see the white even though it's kind of colored. But the, the ones that are closer to the top, that's what I see on here. And so I'm just taking away the green, really, or the red. Okay, so there's that side. So all I am left with is the drips. So that's interesting. So I could totally put another color on there or um, clear even maybe. But, I mean, that's, it's definitely thicker than the little layer that I put on there. 
um, but it's not even halfway up the side. So So there's still holes in here and the color can actually still come out of those. So I'm going to trap them in. All right, I have never cured that much of a solid color before, so let's see how that goes. Okay, so this one, I got some resin on the edge, and I think that's how I <laughs> sealed in the color. But there's some, some on the edge here, and I can't, I can't get it off. So it's, um, it's definitely cured in there. So I was able to trap it. Just not the prettiest, though. Okay, and then this one, let's see what the residue does. Oh, no residue. So this one definitely worked out better than the red one. I think I put too much ink in that red one. Yeah, I definitely like both sides when I do these. Okay. So I do like this tape. Yeah, there's no, no residue on that. That's awesome. Whatever that's about. Alright. What do you think? It's hard. Huh. I actually kind of like that. So if you want a Petri effect with a different colored background, you take the uncured alcohol ink out. Seems a little soft. I'm going to have that cure more. Um, have a cure on the cup too so it's coming from the bottom too. It's a little sticky. Kind of wish I hadn't, I, I had cured it upside down like this before I saw that there was silicone in there and started moving it around because that was a really cool texture on that side. But I don't see anything moving around now, so it seems to all be set in there. guys
<laughs> that one's not exciting. <laughs> So I, um, I got the tops of this cleaned up. I cured this one a little bit longer. Um, actually, I kind of cured all of them a little bit longer just to make sure everything was good. Um, I noticed with this one, you can see the red kind of seeping through. So the white took a lot longer to cure and I think it didn't fully solidify until I cured it this way as well. And this definitely doesn't have any silicone moving around in there anymore. It does give it an interesting texture in that turquoise, but I wish I had cured it before I noticed that silicone moving around in there. So what I'm going to do on all of these, um, I'm going to coat all three of them in an extremely thin layer of resin. I don't really want to dome them. I just kind of want to give them a gloss, really. Um, I'm going to do that on the fronts on all three of them, probably on this one, just to make sure that that white is sealed. Shouldn't be a problem, but there are a couple little air holes in there as well. Um, this one, I think I'm going to leave this, well, it's actually uh, below the bezel right here, so I will top this one. I just noticed a little part that doesn't seem to be fully cured right here but that's okay that will be uh, filled in when I coat with resin again and this one I'm not gonna um, do this one because it already is sticking past the bezel just a little bit I had to go beyond it to get this last layer on there to make sure everything was captured I might try to clean these two spots up, but I'm afraid that if I actually do, I'll create a, a hole, um, and I don't want that. And they're not too bad, and I'll probably wrap this in wire anyways, because sides are all scratched up. Okay, so I was thinking of using um, this resin, which is the thick type, but I think since I want to put such a thin layer down. I'm going to use the regular. I'm going to put this back here. And I'm just going to stick it on um, some parchment paper and use a paintbrush so that way I can make sure that it's very thin. I definitely don't need a lot for all three of them. do the backs of these very thin layer there this one I need to pour into so there's a deep enough ridge for that are curing I just want to go over again um, a little better why I don't recommend using um, molds for this so this is the distress ink that I was telling you about earlier and when I dropped it in there it just stayed like that so it just landed just stayed 
just like that I had no problem putting another um, layer of resin on there and trapping that in there but with the alcohol ink because when you drop it in and it spreads out to the sides um, you can have alcohol ink touching the silicone instead of resin touching the silicone so when you go and demold it that alcohol ink will also come out and that's exactly what happened here so it made a big mess um, I was able to to seal off kind of I, I think I had cleaned out um, as much as I could and just sealed off the hole basically but you can get some neat effects with a mold you just have to know that it's gonna leak on you or if you can somehow get the resin on the edges first um, might be able to work out better but all of this is is basically just leaking um, before I could seal it in somehow so it can work you just have to somehow contain the alcohol ink and that's where the bezels um, come in much easier than than a mold okay so these are done I definitely like this side a bit better. Shows the effect of the silicone. And I will put up some um, pictures or video here for you to see a little bit closer up on all three of them. Um, this side's pretty neat as well. So that is how you do kind of a Petri style in UV resin. Um, just make sure you can contain it somehow, um, or you might have a mess. But if you have any questions, let me know below in the comments. Happy creating!